now, Mercer and Witherspoon, 38 against 35 years of age. We join it at the first bell. Sir. Hard to believe he hasn't won a fight since 1993. The draw against Marion Wilson, the losses to Holofield and Lennox Lewis. It's harder to believe is this. Witherspoon has not had a title shot in a long, long time, yet he's only lost one fight since 1986. Here we go, right to the center of the ring. <laughs> to start throwing power shots. This will be a good one. Witherspoon jabbing. Mercer trying to club a right hand behind it. Gets one in there. Mercer trying that uppercut Tony talked about before, about leaning into it. Witherspoon bombing away. I think both of these guys would like to see an early resolution here. I, I think this fight would have been good 10 years ago or 10 years from now. It's the same type of fighter, same style. Whether this is in the ring or in an alley, this would be a good fight. It's going to be a battle of attrition. Guys with uh, very durable chins. And both guys like each other, believe it or not. I'm sure they're the same type in a way. They've had to go through the same type of things as Witherspoon clubbing downstairs, then throws a left hook. Here's Witherspoon with a crossing defense where he tucks the right hand on the left side of his chin. It's been pretty effective for him. Witherspoon right now showing the speed, though. Yeah. Trying to go to the body because Mercer's giving it to him. There it is, down low by Witherspoon. One of them even traveled a little south, but nothing said. Mercer sure doesn't look 239. He looks a little bit more than that, about 247 or so. He's a little I mean. puffy in the yeah, face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and don't forget those weigh-in numbers are for when they weighed in. They could eat since then. In heavyweights, six to eight pounds can be a couple of meals. There's an uppercut by Mercer as he tries to go to work. Mercer's throwing short, crisp punches. Lateral movement, not an option in this fight. <laughs> There's a couple low ones by Witherspoon. Now he jabs. Mercer wants to establish position inside so he can fire the right crosses like that. Witherspoon countering with an uppercut. Witherspoon should concentrate on Mercer's face. Tends to blow up sometimes. When he goes to the body, I think Mercer could eat those all night. Mercer, on the other hand, should go to the body for Witherspoon to see how, how tough his stomach is. Good left hand by Mercer. Now he comes on after Witherspoon with a grazing right. Not a lot of defense yet. Exactly. I was just thinking the same thing. Both these guys looking to land the punches instead of uh, protecting each other from receiving it. They've been strategic here, each looking for one shot to set up something else. Witherspoon establishing a jab in the opening round. Mercer trying to counter. Witherspoon there doing the smart thing, though, attacking the body. Goes down there again. Nice two-punch combination by Tim Witherspoon. I think you can remove the ropes in this fight. Right now, they're not coming into play. This has been right in front of each other, as we expected. And Witherspoon with a chopping right. And round number one, playing to form. It's been entertaining, and it has been a good one. Witherspoon and Mercer. Spoon in the white trunks, Ray Mercer in the black. Good heavyweight encounter underway. With a spoon, strong body shots in the opening round, and Mercer some good countering. Now Mercer trying the lead in round two. I think if Mercer just moves around, he's got a huge advantage over Witherspoon. Witherspoon is the type of guy that wants to move around. No, he just wants to stay in front and, and just show walk. the power. Yeah, but then that goes back to the conditioning and the ability to move around will. Go back to how much road work you did, and we'll see how much Mercer wants to move. Well, the first round, a very good one, I thought, for Tim Witherspoon. How'd you guys score the first round? I gave the first round to Witherspoon. He was working the body, uh, got a couple of good jabs in there. Mercer made it close, but uh, those good shots to the, to the body by Witherspoon, I thought, carried the round for him. Ditto for me. It was all body on the Witherspoon that won that round. 
a jab. Especially in the last minute of the first round. Exactly. Run. Jabbing at the head was the same. Both guys were given and taken, but it was the body that made the difference for Tim on the judges. Well, that won't bode well for Mercer if the conditioning is the same as his last fight. He needs to make an early start here, build up the rounds. Right now, it's a battle of jabs and no head movement. Chopping right by Mercer. With a spoon looking to find room for the uppercut in there. You are going to see this fight wage two guys right in front of each other who know their styles very well. In interesting uh, little tassel on Ray Mercer's left shoe is he has a ring in front, like a, like a, a not a, I don't know if it's a wedding band, but some kind of a ring. Well, here they go again. Hey, all kinds of symbolism in boxing and good luck charms. Ray Mercer and Witherspoon right in front, as advertised. And stamina is going to be big. We're already seeing some heavy breathing. From both fighters. Ooh, big right by Witherspoon. Mercer answers right back. Knew that he had to do it right there, too. You can't let Witherspoon get the advantage. If he sees you wobble, he'll keep coming on. Witherspoon with a short right inside. These guys are very comfortable with the infighting, and that's also how older fighters preserve their stamina. Got to wonder if their shoes are filled with cement tonight. You know, I was thinking about that. Battle of cement shoes, because it's all just headshots, no movement, an occasional body shot by Witherspoon. Yeah, and I, and I thought Witherspoon might want to go to the body more in this round like he did in the first round. He had success at it, and Mercer left him wide open. Round two, coming to an end. As the second round ending, Dave Bontempo, Tony Page, and Mario Diaz at ringside. Glad you're with us. There's Tim Witherspoon. Hey, you you're working nice. You're working nice. Keep your jab. And you, you're standing in range of his jab. That's why he's catching you with the jab. Don't let him just keep hitting you with the jab. You understand? You are boxing and go back to the body. And your openers will come up. You understand? You're hurting him to the body. And you're open up to the top. Well, that's firing. You can lead it to you, know. Okay. He's waiting for your jab to slip the front counter. Well, this was one of the weapons Mercer showed early in round two. Little left hook and the jab behind that. Now, when he's in shape, he used to do that almost as well as anybody. And could do it for a while, too. And a lot quicker. Oh, well, the signs of age creep up. Had a problem with Witherspoon's corner. The bucket fell over, and all the ice went right in the corner. They're still trying to clean yes, it up. Yes, they are, and they should really get that out before the round starts, which means, Tony, you're going to have some ice in your Coke that you weren't expecting. Well, I've had blood already on me, so what's a little ice? Take the, take the blood out, right? They got everything but a couple of cubes as we start the third round. All but that ice came cascading down. And a pattern for Ray Mercer, jamming early in the round. And then kind of relaxing. But Mercer's hands are starting to come down now. We're seeing the jabathon early in the round, as we did in round two. Then with a spoon, puts a body shot behind it. This is what I expected of Witherspoon. More body shots to Mercer's stomach. Anybody for lateral movement? <laughs> They must have put that in the contract. No, you can't move. Not allowed. First man to have his back touch the ropes loses a point. They're honoring that contract, are they not? They most certainly are. Right in front of each other. Witherspoon with a left hook trying to drive Mercer back. Mercer looking for his countering chance. Two KG veterans here looking to set up their shots. And both trying to do the work that will pay off later. In Witherspoon's case, the body. You know, if Witherspoon would just follow up that jab with that quick right, he might have more success because as soon as he jabs Mercer, you'll always watch him put his hands down. Mercer with two. You can tell those body punches are hurting Mercer because he's bringing his hands exactly. down to protect his ribs. Very good point, Tony. Jab by Witherspoon, and there is Mercer on the outside. Look at Mercer's eyes. It looks like they're starting to swell a bit. The left eye, the, the right eye especially, yeah. That is his left eye there, starting to close. The jabs of Witherspoon there. 
And there's that little peekaboo crossover by Witherspoon and his defense. Then he gets inside. Good hook by Witherspoon. Uppercut. Mercer answers back. Two guys certainly not afraid to be warriors. Final minute of round three. Both of realize they got nothing to lose. That's why. Now Mercer worked on that uppercut in the dressing room. It's, it's a good time to throw it when you're inside on your man. And he's timing Witherspoon firing a shot. He gets in behind the Witherspoon shot. There's a clubbing right by Mercer. These guys are both, they're happy to be fighting on the inside like this. They can conserve some energy. And so the best of them is coming out. Final minute, round three. You know, if Witherspoon thinks he's going to knock him out, it's going to it's going to be tough. As Mercer connects with a good right. Well, these are guys with legendary chins. Exactly, and Mercer's only been down once, and that was the, a legend in himself, Holyfield. Round three, ticking away, much like the first two, and that you didn't see very much of the ring because they didn't need it. Anna Walker, your chosen subject is the biggest pub quiz ever. What is the quiz about? It's a live 10-hour pub quiz being held at participating pubs and clubs. Correct. When is it being held? On Friday the 27th of December on Sky. Correct. Who can take part? Anyone who enters a team at their local participating pub. Um, how can I find out more? For further details, just call 0990-241-242. Don't forget, it's only being shown in pubs and clubs, so make sure your landlord has registered. The biggest pub quiz ever when Anna Walker and Nick Hancock will be asking the questions. Correct. I think in the round we just saw here between Witherspoon and Mercer, I think we started to see the level of, of change their favor. Witherspoon, I mean, you saw him starting to come on and get uh, a bit more, and you saw him land more punches on Mercer in that round, and Mercer slowing down. Have you guys given Mercer any of the first three rounds? None. I, I admit I gave him the last round. I thought a couple of good right hands he landed changed the round a little bit. It's still a close round. So, Mercer and Witherspoon in round four. Witherspoon former two-time heavyweight champion. Mercer held the WBO title, but since the loss to Larry Holmes in 1992, hasn't been there. Good action here by Mercer. Witherspoon trying to cover up and not get hit, trying to roll with them, as Mercer had his best opportunity for explosiveness in this bout. The problem with Mercer is he starts to coast after a while. Well, he's waiting on the inside, and those body shots by Witherspoon really are taking a toll. They are good, powerful, hard shots. Really moved Mercer there. You saw him react when he got hit with the first one, trying to make the adjustment for the second body blow that was uh, on its way. And Witherspoon, if he keeps it up, will take some of the pop out of Mercer. But you know, Witherspoon's already regrouped. Look at him, and look at him come back. He is firing more than one shot to the body, too. A little different than some past Witherspoon fights. Witherspoon, it looked like that rally favored him more than he was caught by, because now he's really coming on. He lands that big right. These guys Mercer are counters. Both trying to set up bombs. Mercer, nice uppercut by Ray Mercer. Good left hook by Mercer. Witherspoon showing some signs of fatigue, and Mercer gambling right now. Witherspoon's dazed. One of the few opportunities a fighter know he has in a fight, and so Ray Mercer is going for all of it right now. He is rolling the dice, letting it all out. Mercer is a fighter of rote. He will do what works for him over and over and over. He finally landed that right uppercut. He keeps throwing it. Now he's right hand, right uppercut crazy. But instead of putting his hands up, Mercer's got to get back inside and keep on throwing him. Now if you watch, he's getting on the defense end. Well, you know in this type of fight, with each guy studying, looking to counter, there are going to be, for each fighter, two or three big chances in this bout. They'll wait for that, they'll try to explode. Ray Mercer just had one of those two or three. See, now he's backing off. You can't do that. You had the guy in trouble, he's got to go back in. He's like, he's looking for that punch. Mercer's that, trying to throw the right hand. That's that, what he set him up for. That chance went away. The one Mercer had has gone away, but a good round for him anyway. As the fourth round ticks down in this heavyweight chess match.
tell you, get them tired, man. So you put a little pressure on them. Hey, uh, hey, Tony. As it is, it's... Uh, huh? No, oh, Ray, you're not in the body at all. What's it now? Okay, I'm sorry. He's getting tired. I know. Getting tired. You hit my two jab, you take it a right hand to the body, take the hook back to the body. Okay. Uh, you got more injury than he's got now. You understand? Mm -hmm. so now, Mercer is looking to find operating room inside so he can do this. Jabbing for show. Waiting. Where is that opportunity? Getting around the crossover defense, and there it is. You saw him plot away to get past the crossover. You got to keep working at it. And there is Ray Mercer after good moments for him in round four. Mercer's coming on. Sometimes we joke about truth and advertising in the corners, and sometimes they like work on fighters' heads and everything. But with two heavyweights, you're not going to be wrong when you say he's tired. <laughs> Watch and that's this. what was told to Mercer between rounds. But when you saw him and they asked him, they say, he, he, he wore him down, he was dazed. He goes, yeah, I know, I know. And he was saying, he's, he knows what he's in there against right now. I think both guys pick up the pace this round because Willisville wants to reestablish himself. Mercer wants to keep chopping him, keep chopping away. Mercer wants to build momentum over a couple rounds. The uppercut was working for him in the last round. And by getting close to Witherspoon, he can save some stamina. Already, Breathing heavily, and Witherspoon goes to work, so does Mercer. Pounding the body, good uppercut by Mercer. Witherspoon answers back against the vaunted Ray Mercer chin. Drove him off the mark. And Witherspoon looked to referee Tony Perez for some assistance. I think that caught Mercer off guard, because maybe Mercer might have been looking over also, and Witherspoon just landed the right. Mercer stopped for a moment. As Witherspoon was trying to referee at the same time, Mercer bought into that instead of taking advantage. Mercer has not tried any body shots. It's all head shots. And he's trying to work it, and Witherspoon has done an excellent job and he's going a, to the body. And Mercer's abandoned what he was doing well early on, that uppercut. And he just hasn't been able to find it. But if it's not there, go to something else. And in this case, the body shot would be there. Chopping right by Witherspoon. Now Witherspoon works downstairs. Good left hook. Good Fights in Witherspoon. Good four punch combination by Witherspoon. And every single one of those punches landed with a fury. These guys lean on each other, and then they explode. Two veterans. The problem, though, with, with Witherspoon, he's doing exactly what Mercer did last round. He's not going in after him. He's got him a little bit in trouble. What about the conditioning? Now Mercer takes it and they give. Good right hand by Witherspoon. Hurt Mercer. Yes, he, he hangs on. Yes, he did. Two guys willing to open up, and Witherspoon got the better of it. Tim's got to get on him now. He's got to get on him. Mercer's Witherspoon hurt, has a chance. He has a chance to put Ray Mercer in serious trouble. Which Plenty would of time. be new territory for Mercer. Does Witherspoon have the stamina here? War on Mercer there, stalking in, and now Mercer showing the queer street effects to some degree, trying to recapture his senses. And, and Mercer is chewing on his mouthpiece. I never saw that before. Mercer not there right now at the end of round five, which has been an exceptional one for Tim Witherspoon. Mercer had been jabbing, which he does early in the round. Clubbing right by Mercer, getting something going. Witherspoon had looked over at the referee, now goes to the body. Mercer is holding and hitting, and that is what Witherspoon is bringing to the attention of the referee. Mercer buys into it and gets hit. Good. Later on, we will see Mercer getting whacked here by Witherspoon. That was a good shot up top, and Mercer with the presence of mind to hold on when he knew he'd been hurt. There's a reason Ray Mercer has never been stopped, and that's one. 
smart tactician. He may not have the skills to get him to a championship fight, but he's, he's still a smart fighter when it comes to getting in trouble. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, he knew how to survive, <laughs> and Witherspoon's only been stopped once. That was against James Bone Crusher Smith. But boy, is Mercer's mouth wide open, isn't it, Tony? Yeah, I'm wondering if something might be wrong with his jaw. I've never seen anybody chew on their mouthpiece. He's had his jaw blow up in fights before, Ray Mercer has. Against Burke Cooper. Extremely big after that, and it, it was not broken in that fight. I think also that Ray Mercer has hit a bit of a stamina wall. This is about where he hit it against Lennox Lewis. It's funny, you look at, you look at Witherspoon's face, it looks like it, this is the first round. No swelling. Not really sweating that much. And that's and that says that Mercer's not having any any effect on his punches. He's not putting any power behind it. Also, with a spoon with a sense of pacing that Mercer hadn't had. But Mercer taking his chances here. If you give him an opportunity, he will go all out. We saw two rounds ago how Ray Mercer went for it in round four. I think one thing that's not benefiting Mercer is if you watch when Witherspoon goes to the body and you can tell Mercer's going to get ready for it. That's not what you want to do in front of the judges. That's what's going to get your points taken away from your favor in a round. And he's trying to set up a counter behind that, but you look to be on the receiving end all the time with that. Might be Mercer's worst nightmare, a Tim Witherspoon in shape. <laughs> Complimented by his own granite chin. Yeah. Hey, but that's got to say a lot for, for Witherspoon right there. It shows him how serious he's taking his comeback again. Mm -hmm. He's really maybe showing that the last two fights that he won convincingly aren't flukes. Yeah. And he's taking a good punch from a solid heavyweight in Ray Mercer. And we've seen Witherspoon had to be more workmanlike in this bout than in many others because he's got a guy who is always going to be looking for a bomb and a guy he knew he could not put out early. Right. Absolutely not. As Tony mentioned earlier in the round, you look at Witherspoon, and he hasn't had any effect, really, from the punches that Mercer threw at him. Well, well, Witherspoon hasn't had to cut off the ring too much. He hasn't had a Ray Mercer moving. So his stamina, like Mercer's, has been preserved by the style of this bout. And I think I think Mercer has given into standing inside the ring because you watch he's moving around a lot more now and, and respecting Witherspoon. Well, a round in which... Despite all the analysis and all the attempts by these guys to do something, not much happened in this round. Very quiet. Which usually means the next round could be interesting. <laughs> these Both guys, guys may be coasting. They were able to offset each other throughout much of round six. We've got four rounds to go. So we start round seven. Dave Bontempo, Tony Page, and Mario Diaz from Atlantic City, New Jersey. In the preliminary to Bo Galata, a fight that could very much be a main event of its own. Tim Witherspoon and Ray Mercer. Witherspoon, former two-time champion in the white trunks, and Ray Mercer in the black. Witherspoon has done an excellent job to the body in this bout, and Ray Mercer has been very selective in his opportunities. We've just seen something extremely interesting. Ray Mercer's going backwards. You don't see that much, and here's Witherspoon coming on. Ray Mercer has never been stopped. Now here's where Mercer should be opening up on the body. This is where he has the advantage. And he Big shots by Witherspoon. Mercer answers back. It seems that if you hit, hit Mercer, you goad him into going up another level, but he needs that. But you know what? Witherspoon to do it. But when you go to Mercer, he leaves himself wide open, and that's the advantage to Witherspoon. Witherspoon has been sharp, has been powerful with his punches, and Mercer has played the waiting game on Tim Witherspoon. Mercer's trainer, Tommy Park, told him, you've got to finish a little more. He you said, you have to come out big time, and he's right. You know, the problem is with Mercer's that... Whenever he fights a guy with experience, he always seems to be outclassed. It happened in the Jesse Ferguson fight. It happened in the Evander Holyfield fight. It happened in the Larry Holmes fight. Now it's happening in this fight. And yet a guy who at times has shown a good jab, has shown some good ring skills and movement in some fights. Guys, when, but here he's being outworked. When's the last time you saw Ray Mercer go backwards? Doesn't happen often. No. I don't even remember. 
Tim Witherspoon able to do what fighters have not consistently been able to do to Ray Mercer and doing that. And I think some of that, guys, is the conditioning factor of Ray Mercer. He's oh. hit a wall in this fight, same place he hit it against Lennox Lewis, and his combativeness is not as there as much as it was in earlier fights in his career. Absolutely. I've always said Mercer's the best six-round fighter in the world. Well, we're in round seven. We're in round seven, and... Overtime. And, he, and these are waters that Mercer does not like to sail in. No. And the problem is, tonight he wasn't the best six-round fighter. Yes. he lost Very almost good. all these rounds. Yes. Exactly. You know, he's showing a lot of good bursts at times, but the problem is he's not winning the rounds when he's doing those bursts. And right now, I got Witherspoon winning this fight with ease. And Tony, what's your numbers? I have uh, Witherspoon 58-56. So, and this is the territory now where Witherspoon, at least on paper, figured to pull away from a close fight, and he has certainly had himself a good round seven. We've got three to go, Witherspoon and Mercer. Well, we see, we hear Witherspoon lobbying with his corner to do better in the scorecards, and you can see why. He doesn't want to think this fight's even when he's doing this kind of work. Mercer is able to explode off the jab after Witherspoon had served notice that he was in some trouble. Good Witherspoon. exchanges there. Witherspoon's doing everything perfectly right, following his game plan. All punches in his arsenal are working. You know, I can't remember the last time I saw Tim Witherspoon fight within himself consistently from the opening bell, as he has here. He's done a great job tonight. A guy who has learned his limitations as well as his strengths. So, round eight, Tim Witherspoon in the white trunks doing an excellent inside job on Ray Mercer, who has been fading in the last round, but is always dangerous. With the heavyweight picture lined up the way that it is right now, who knows, maybe the winner of this fight gets the winner of Bogolata. And sure. The, and the loser fights George Foreman. <laughs> or the richest guy fights George Foreman. <laughs> exactly. The Mercer's just not busy enough. He needs to bury his offense, jab to the head, a shot to the body, back to the head, but I don't think he has the stamina to do that. But this round, he's coming out and showing that. He shows it early in the early. round. First minute of every round, Mercer can show that, but you know what? It's not in the gas tank. And that has been the one problem Ray Mercer has had throughout his career. I'll have to is amend... The gas tank is not there. I'll have to amend my uh, description of Ray Mercer. He's the best one-minute fighter in the world. It's really come on in this round. Well, we talked about the two or three opportunities a guy has, and maybe Mercer might get a second win, but you know what? These rounds have gotten away from him, as Witherspoon has been very disciplined. Witherspoon, throughout his career, an exceptional defensive fighter. And so the openings Mercer might see against other fighters who commit, he won't see against Witherspoon. Prior to this round, we heard Witherspoon's corner say, okay, just go out and win the next three rounds. It's pretty close. I mean, you're way ahead. But, you know, that's not the right thing to say because since that time, he's come out and he's not the same fighter he once was. He's just now going in and just jabbing lightly, but Mercer's won in this round. Every fighter responds differently to what the corner say. Sometimes they'll deliberately say something, a little Pinocchio-like, just to try to get the guy motivated. But veteran fighters, you can't fool them anyway. Oh, exactly. But Mercer has done a pretty good job this round digging, as Witherspoon has not been as active in round eight. Witherspoon's not working that jab. His hands are down right about now. Spoon winning against Mercer, but Mercer has shown some tenacity in round eight and is having a good round eight for himself. A little animation here by Ray Mercer. Off the ropes, fighting well. 
Two Mercer. rounds to go. Mercer's corner was yelling, come on, come on. And Witherspoon's mouth now is starting to be a little bit more open than what it once was. Good eighth round for Mercer. One thing you always get with Ray Mercer, a fight. It's not an easy win. You gotta, you gotta earn it. Every time, don't look around. There's the corner, giving Mercer the lecture. They kind of know they can't really explode on him. And there he's older. He knows. You know he's still get a fight from Ray Mercer, but he never seems to be able to just break out and go that extra mile. So the ninth round, two to go. Ray Mercer had a good eighth round. You guys give it to him. Yes, definitely. David With Mercer. ease. I have Witherspoon up 77-75. I have Witherspoon up 77 to 74. Actually gave him a 10-8 round in round number five. All right, I've got Witherspoon pretty decisive too, with two rounds to go. And you can see how Mercer can get into the type of fight where there's an argument later, as there was with Lennox Lewis. Hey, if you lose close all the time, you keep getting work. You don't get the title shot, but you keep getting work. The young, young bucks in the division have to go through you. And one man who's across the ring from me staring intently at this fight right now is Evander Holyfield. Well, Tony, to buttress the point you just made, Mercer's getting work, but he hasn't won since November 19th of 1993. And yet, he's in big showcase battles. Holyfield and Lewis among them. And, of course, this one. So, Witherspoon putting on some pressure as we approach the halfway point of round nine. It has been tactically what we expected. Two guys who know how to work on the inside, very schooled, and older fighters needing to preserve their stamina. Mercer's still going backwards, trying to come behind the left jab, but I don't think he has a spring in his legs to do that. And you know, it's tough to score with the judges when you're coming backwards in a fight. Whenever you're moving back, you're showing a lot of respect, and judges might think, hey, something's wrong with this guy. It's also tough to sway judges when you get a reputation throughout the course of this fight, perhaps, of losing close rounds. Absolutely. They don't necessarily make the adjustment to give you the close ones. So, a minute to go in round nine. Mercer has been fighting with renewed vigor since the eighth. This may be one of the chances you were talking about, Dave. I think it is. He's coming on. Witherspoon has really hit a stamina wall. Witherspoon's got to dig deep. In fact, both guys got to dig deep. But Mercer, because he's in a deeper hole, he's got to dig deeper and harder and faster. Witherspoon looks like somebody trying to save himself for round 10 because he's got nothing in there now, right now. Now he got some blood dripping down on Witherspoon's mouth on the lower lip. So those uppercuts may be taking a toll. Tim Witherspoon has hit the wall, and Ray Mercer has put two good rounds together. Mercer sizing him up. How about the early rounds? Did they hurt Ray Mercer? Mercer's coming on. Two good rounds in a row by Ray Mercer. Probably won them both. Fight. I've enjoyed it. To his credit, Ray Mercer has come back, and Tony, you called him the best six-round fighter. He spaced his rounds this time. He wasn't good in the middle. He's better at the end here. He the last six. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think it's a fight that has basically, for people who appreciate 
the fine art of inside techniques and working off situations. It has justified its billing. It's two guys who did what they said they would. No booing for 10 rounds. The fans have enjoyed it. Mercer's coming on. This is the round. And Ray Mercer. And this is the round he needs to come on in. Ray Mercer has come on in the second half of the fight. And again, serving notice that there is something in him that will try to make people invite him back. He just won't go away. Is what you he say. will not go away, <laughs> and he won't go over the top. Hey, if, if you lose a lot of close fights, you also become the ideal target yeah. for people looking to match their fighters. But if Ray Mercer loses this one, he will kick himself over the middle rounds of this fight. Tim Witherspoon, meanwhile, I think had a bit of a cushion coming in. And it looked like he was saving himself for round 10, the way a long-distance runner yeah. might save himself for the final lap. Some long-distance runners never want to take the lead. And I think Mercer, I mean, I think Witherspoon let Mercer catch up to him. Mercer doing a nice job here. Really landed some good seven. blows. In the, in the last in the last 30 seconds he's landed four crisp big blows well tim witherspoon is dog tired and mercer goes for it now whatever he's got he'll try to steal it now good chopping right by ray mercer is an opportunity there for him ray mercer has waited for tim witherspoon to bring the opportunities to him he may pay the price, but right now, he is staring at a chance and, in the final minute. And Witherspoon just threw a right that was just so slow, and Mercer did nothing to counter it. Well, this will be very intriguing according to the way you score it. If the round ended right now, I would give Ray Mercer the last three rounds of this bout. Throwing this up for grabs, Witherspoon was very good early in the fight. But if you put some close rounds, to Mercer instead of Witherspoon. Maybe you get that draw Tony talked about. You never know what the judges are talking about. Also, we see more blood now on the on the lower lip of Witherspoon. It has been a good fight. We saw Witherspoon early and Withers and uh, Mercer late. And Tim Witherspoon does not want to fight one second more than the end of this bout. Ray Mercer, who peaked in the sixth round in his last fight comes back and fights very well for rounds eight, nine, and 10. Maybe he stole something here. Well, I gave it to Mercer. I gave it as a, it's a draw because Mercer won the last round. Well, for Ray Mercer, that would be like stealing a win if they call it a draw mm -hmm. because he was way down. I had Witherspoon by a couple based on his early performance. And how about you, Mario? I had Witherspoon 95 to 94, but I did give him a 10-8 round. So let's see how the judges scored that. It was the fifth round. So basically, the judges, based on your cards, because they don't do that too much in these situations, you guys would both be looking at draws, and that would be satisfactory. It was a good fight for both yeah. fighters. It, it, they can live to fight another day, whoever wins. And actually, neither reputation got tarnished. No, these guys, these guys fought to their talent level and basically showed that they were guys in their late 30s who fight in spurts. Interesting fight. I, you know, they, they can fight again. I bet, I bet they scared off a lot of fighters. Though. Yeah, but can Ray Mercer ever get to a level beyond this? Ray Mercer cannot seem to get over the top. Has some tough rounds and fights, and Tim Witherspoon was fighting brilliantly, but guess what? He hit the wall after round seven and showed that he's 38 years old. He did. If this had been a six-round fight, he would have won going away. These guys can come back to fight, but maybe on a senior circuit level. <laughs> could be, could be. Well, what Ray Mercer did was provide some intrigue about the decision here, Tony, because Witherspoon was coasting. It was his. He was, and it's funny when his corner said it, it's an even fight. Should Let's hear it. the result. Ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of Caesars Atlantic City, we go to the scorecards. Paul Fenty scores the bout 97 to 93. Calvin Claxton scores it 97 to 91. And Joseph Pasquale scores the bout 97-93 for the winner by unanimous decision, Merciless Ray wow. Mercer!
Well, Ray Mercer shocking the building. Wow. Shocking us here. It looked like Witherspoon had the edge a little bit. You guys have a draw. Four points, six points, and four points from Mercer. How about that, huh? Unbelievable. Wow, I guess uh, something to say about going backwards. It was being taken to him. Ray Mercer did finish very strongly in rounds eight, nine, and ten.